some hopefully good news for the car manufacturer. Fiat Chrysler says they're going to restart manufacturing to the United States and Canada starting May 4th. Now they ceased all production on March 18th so it's you know it's almost two months that they'll be shut down but that's what their plan is. They're not saying what they're going to do in Mexico yet but they want to start revamping the U.S. and Canadian factories. Now since mid-March more than 800,000 people have filed for unemployment in the state of Michigan. They still make a lot of vehicles there so people want to get back to work so they got to open the factories get them back to work but of course they don't want to get sick so it's still kind of a juggling act with that stuff because most of the people who got sick and died are in Detroit and the suburbs where they make the cars so it's a hot spot now you know by then it might have all quieted down let's hope it does Geraldo 16 says Scotty I recently bought a Toyota Corolla 06 hatchback with an automatic transmission it has a 1.4 diesel engine with 100,000 miles is it reliable or did I make a bad decision well I'm assuming mean you're not in the United States if you're in the United States you would have made a relatively bad decision because they never sold them here and if you bought it as an imported vehicle good luck getting parts good luck finding somebody who knows how to work on a Toyota diesel engine but in the rest of the world you made a great decision because they've sold diesels all over the place they sell tons of them in Australia and Europe if you're in an area where people buy them there's mechanics that can work on them places you can get parts no they're excellent they can last a really long time I got friends in Australia that have them they love them and in England too so if you're not in the United States you made a good decision you never want to buy an imported vehicle that they don't sell in one country that came from another country because that uh, parts is too much hassle and like that Americans aren't big on diesel personal vehicles so you're gonna have a hard time finding anybody who knows how to work on a thing but in Europe no you're not going to have that problem. T Dog says, What do you think of the 2016 Cadillac CTS 3.6? leader not that much uh you know they're just gm vehicles the quality control isn't there it's the v6 engine which isn't that popular of an engine they generally start falling apart when they get older on the positive side let's say you're thinking about buying one and it's low mileage you can get them cheap the resale value is crap nobody wants to buy them used especially so if you get one that's got 30 40 thousand miles on it real cheap it might be okay they generally don't fall apart till they get 90 or 100 thousand miles on them then they fall apart but if you could buy one really cheap and it's low mileage then why not take advantage of a situation like that just do not pay much for one because they aren't worth it anything as they age they're not popular vehicles they do have problems as all GM vehicles do as they age but what the heck if you loaded a Cadillac and you can get a dirt cheap what the heck just do not pay much for it undying red comet says I saw you comparing Kia to Toyota the Kia Forte is almost half the price of a Toyota Yaris both being 2012 I know Toyota's a longer history I'm wondering if you see major problems with parts like transmissions or engines in Kia that you experience I don't mind sluggish controls but I want a car to last three to five years hopefully five plus years but I'm happy with three to five years couldn't find any cheap Toyota cars but there's plenty of Kias what do you think the reason there's plenty of cheap Kias is because they're not made as well and the price is less it's just how it goes the Toyota Corollas the Honda Civics have good resale values they last they're well-made cars you can find a Kia that's got 40 50 60 thousand miles on it it could easily last you three to five years if you take care of it they generally don't fall apart till they get over 100,000 miles now if you saw a Kia that had 140,000 miles I wouldn't buy it I'd buy a Corolla or a Civic if I checked it out and saw it was a good car I would still buy it with that mileage I bought my Toyota Celica which is basically a Toyota Corolla engine and transmission when it had over 200,000 miles on when I bought it so you know there's nothing wrong with that but you can't do that with a Kia but if you can find a low mileage one what the heck if it's cheap enough where you live and there's parts available go ahead just don't buy a high mileage one because it isn't going to last you three to five years Joseph the Great says good day I'm planning to buy my first new car after driving an old O2 Civic it's hard to find and buy parts to repair at this point getting it fixed it cost me three grand my question is it worth buying a 2020 vehicle should I stay away from financing I like the Mazda CX-9 I live in Alberta where it snows all the time you know buying a new vehicle is probably one of the worst decisions that you can make you buy a new vehicle drive it off the lot you've lost you know at least 30 40 percent of the value of the car right there when I get a good used vehicle like I do the Mazda the new ones are better than the old ones but uh, the money that they cost and what their resale value is you're much better buying a used one but hey you got a 2002 so you obviously don't care about driving old vehicles so get one that's 
newer than that but don't go buy a brand new car you're throwing your money away now the only reason I'd say go ahead and buy a new car let's say you want to drive a car forever then go ahead go buy a brand new Toyota Corolla or a brand new Honda Civic and drive it for 20 30 years if you're going to do that go ahead you can buy a new one but even me I'm too cheap for that I'll buy one that's eight or ten years old and I'll still drive it for 20 or 30 years so <laughs> Bye bye, new one. Charlie's lost it now, says. I got an 04 Ford F 150. And here's the weird thing my shifter will only release when I'm not stepping on the brake pedal. When I step on the brake pedal, it won't release. Hell, sounds weird, you know? It's supposed to release when you step on the brake pedal, but yours is working backwards. I've seen that happen before. And the main reason they'll work backwards is because it's not grounded correctly. And when you don't have grounds working right, cars can do weird things. Electricity can actually start flowing the wrong way because it's using power wires to ground it. There's a black pink wire that's supposed to ground it, the switch, the brake switch. And on those, a lot of times the black pink wire either gets loose corroded where it bolts in you'll see corrosion or you wiggle it and it moves it should be real tight take it off clean it shiny put it back on odds are you'll find it'll work normally because when I've seen that that's the only thing that logically can do it is it's working backwards because the ground circuit is screwed up anything else it's either going to work or not work but working backwards is because the ground system's messing up ground systems are really logical you gotta have power and ground so if you don't have both things don't work but if they're not working correctly ground system can do all kinds of weird things I've seen where somebody steps on the brake lights and the windshield wipers start turning on they can do all kinds of things when you get weird stuff first check ground wires that's almost always what does Sharona don't know it says I got an 04 Cadillac Escalade when I step on the gas it won't take off and it has two codes P1120 and P1220 about the throttle position sensor signal voltage with those particular codes it's almost always a bad PAC the module for the throttle control sometimes the throttles themselves go bad but from my experience with those when I have those two codes the module itself has gone bad now you can't fix it yourself because you could put a module and it won't run it's got to be reprogrammed to be accepted by the vehicle so you're gonna have to have a mechanic to do it anyway tell them to check the throttle and the module I'll probably find that the module is the problem because on that vehicle they're separate pieces sometimes they're all one piece and you got no choice you got to buy it because they're both the same bolted together and you can't get them separately but on that you can get the module separately well here's something I've been talking about for a long time robotic vehicles well a company called Starsky Robotics they just shut down they were making big 18 wheeler trucks for self-driving they have shut the company down now they started up like 2015 and they're trying to make robotic 18-wheeler trucks that drove themselves and the software to operate them they say that it's much more complicated than people think now originally they had some radical success but like the guy said who ran the company he said in the beginning you're starting from nothing so it looks like you're doing really good but they find out that the fine points of actually having them driving down the road in real world situations didn't work out so well it's a lot more complicated than they thought the reason they start with the big trucks was there's a shortage of truck drivers and they want to have control over the trucks and hey mainly they're driving on the highway right so they figured they're on the highway it's simpler than driving in cities with cars all over the place they're all going in the same direction right but even then they found out it was a lot more complex than they thought it was so they're shutting the company down another component of the failure was basically venture capitalists themselves venture capitalists do not like gambling in businesses that have traditional low profitability more capital investment these trucks cost a lot of money owning and operating a freight service that's a very top heavy business you got a lot of money invested they're not really into that they're, they're, they're more high techy stuff some of them invested in it obviously thinking oh the high tech truck's going to drive itself but then they say well it's a truck you got to buy all this stuff so they all shied away from them the guys ran out of money and another aspect is of course everybody talks about safety is number one but in the real world no it isn't in the business world safety is not number one so this isn't their highest priority they still probably find out it's a lot cheaper to just have trucks that they can buy cheap and have drivers drive them the people know how to drive the trucks and basically think about it the trucks when they get somewhere they got to be unloaded they got to be put out you need people to do that unless there's an army of robots that are coming out to empty the trucks out too so it turned out that a lot of this was a lot more science fiction and now this company's gone 
And I don't think there's going to be that many guys following up in the near future when they see, hey, those guys, they, they've been doing it for a while and they failed. Why should we invest all this money in something that may or may not come to fruition? So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.